Uh, no, I got in yesterday. Okay. Good deal. Nate Duncan, would you, you want to sit? We'll sit. Okay, cool. All right. So let's, let's unpack a little bit. All right, let's do it. Uh, so what inspired this? Uh, well, I've, I start off as an actor, and I, as many actors, many times you're sitting around waiting for roles to kind of appear, right, or to audition for an opportunity. So I started kind of creating my own projects, and they were all comedies. They were all very different from this. I did four short films that were comedies, mockumentary style, and I just wanted to challenge myself. I wanted to do something that was a, a drama, but also had um, more thought and meaning to it that hopefully left the audience uh, with a positive message at the end of the film. And then also something that could kind of um, ins hopefully inspire the audience. And then I also left a few breadcrumbs too, which I like to do. There's actually four clues uh, within the film that give away the ending. Nobody has ever found more than two of them. So I'm curious if anybody saw any more than two. Uh, but I wanted to do that as well, and if you go back and notice it after I tell you those things, it'll probably become a little bit more clear, the, the ending. Give us the uh, one or two breadcrumbs. Okay, so one of them is when he goes into the, uh, the lobby area, there's a screen, and his flashbacks are actually playing on the screen, but most people don't realize that. I, I did notice it. You did that? Okay, good. <laughs> and then another thing is, is that when he goes into that room also, there's a painting on the wall. That's the same painting that's in the coffee shop, the scene before, but there's only one shot in that coffee shop where you could actually see that, that photo um, as well. So those are two of the, of the four. Then if you want to know the other two, you can come up and ask me. <laughs> okay, so this was, uh, did you write this as well? So I wrote it as well, yes. Okay, and it, there's no, this is not, uh, this is all fiction? Yes, all fiction. Okay. Good. I'm, I'm glad that, you know. Well, I'm just glad. <laughs> you got I, I mean, you know, I've yeah. been doing this a while, and, you know, I don't want to be up here <laughs> crying, and he's crying, y'all are crying, and things of that nature. So I'm glad everybody in your family's yeah. doing good. Yeah, we're good. Thank <laughs> you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, folks. That's doing good. Okay, so how was your, your path uh, on acting? You mentioned that you, this came out of a lack of work, I'm assuming. Yeah. Yeah, and, and so what had you done thus far? Uh, before this? In terms of acting? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I've done a few shows, you know, a few uh, soaps and whatnot. And funny enough, I, uh, another actor that I wanted to play opposite me is, is actually in Greenleaf. He plays, uh, his name is B.J. Bryant, a phenomenal actor. He plays the Aaron Asian Jeffries. Dude? No, no, he wasn't in the film. Like, oh. I wanted him to play opposite uh, to me. And I wrote this role essentially for him because it was right before, it was before he got Greenleaf. And I was, you know, we're trying to help each other out as, as actors. And then, but I decided I wanted a strong female lead as opposed to, there was a little too male dominant, so I decided to do a positive uh, female lead, and many of the actors that I feel like are also talented in the film, uh, there's a lot of dry spots in between you know, shows that you're on or auditioning mm -hmm. and stuff like that, so you're doing a lot of sitting around waiting. Sometimes it could be very busy, sometimes it could be very slow. So during the very slow uh, times, I try to just stay creative by you know, writing, creating content on my own, and then I you know, was really scared about shooting this because I didn't really have any money or a background in drama, uh, but I just went for it and I was fortunate enough to see myself with some amazing people that really helped me throughout the process. So this is your first piece? This is my first drama. I did like four comedies that are very low budget. Directing? Uh, yeah, I directed four, uh, comedies. four comedies that were very low budget, very, very different. I mean, this is low budget too, but a, a drama. It looks very good. Thank you. Yeah, and I'm assuming the comedies didn't look as good as this. No, they did not. <laughs> no. I'll tell you that right now. So, so what, what was the, uh, I mean, I guess you kissed a lot of frogs to get yes. to these, these uh, princes, so to speak, yes. that helped you. Okay. Yeah. One of the things I liked was the, uh, the diversity. I thought the diversity that you had was really good. It wasn't, um, you know, I don't know, it was normal. Since it is a waiting room for heaven, assumingly, or hell, uh, should have different different people in there. It should be pretty crowded, honestly. But <laughs> yeah. it was a little light, right? <laughs> right, right. It was a light day, right? Uh, yeah. But yeah, I enjoyed the the minor role of the Asian dude and the and the the white gentleman. I thought that was great. Um, well, and the other clue, I, I don't know. It, that that's obviously your sister, the actor's sister, or the the lead character's sister in the play. Is that a nugget or? Yeah, so that was a nugget too. So you make a, there's a line, one of the other ones is there's a line in the beginning where she says, you know, I used to play soccer as a kid. Right. So that was another, right. one of the little uh, clues mm -hmm. to the ending. If you, and you'll, you'll notice that now if you, you know. I think, I think for me, the other 
kind of giveaway, so to speak, was just the complexion of the little girl and the complexion yeah. of the... So, yeah, and it was really interesting because they're both... Uh, the, the little girl is half Hispanic, half white, and then Sean, who plays the, the phenomenal, you know, supporting a female actress in this piece, um, she's... She has so many different mixes to this day. She told me like ten different things. I still don't know exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what she is. But yeah. <laughs> but you, she's so believable in almost all of them. Right. And she's an amazing actress as well. Because I wanted to do something that it would be believable that they could be such a sisters, but it's not something that was hopefully not too obvious. Right. Maybe to some people uh, it wasn't. But it is also hard when you're casting for both, you know, a child and an adult role to make them, especially for this, because I didn't want it to be too obvious, but mm -hmm. something that would would be within the realm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see if we have any questions. Do we have any questions from you guys? Okay, one, okay. All right, I'm a filmmaker, so I'm always interested in the process. So my three questions are is, um, how long did it take to shoot? What camera did, did you use? And how did you get that incredible location in terms of with the skyline? Yeah, okay, that's a great question. So um, it took us, uh, four days to shoot, or actually, yeah, four days. We shot three days in Northern California, and then one day at the Sky Studio in LA. That's the lo that was the name of the location. It's on the the AT and T building. It's on the 30th, or now it's the USC building. It's downtown. A beautiful location. Uh, I found that location on action. I I was going. So I found it on accident. I w was signing a contract for this crappy loft because I had no money to afford. Uh, a good location, then I came across that one on accident, and I said, oh my God, this is perfect. This is exactly what I want. And I called them, and they said, okay, yeah, that's great. We do a lot of movies and, and, and commercials. It's gonna be $15,000. I said, uh, okay, um, well, I can't do that because that is well over the entire budget of my, of my film. So I said, I'm an independent you know, filmmaker. What could you do? I'll come in on a day off, whatever, and they really work with me. I ended up costing around, uh, Three thousand dollars for after everything, but that was and that was seventy five percent of my budget was that location. But it made the entire uh, film. Yeah, I packed everything in that day, and that's the only thing is I I was really rushed because that was that's one thing. If I would if I had more money, I would do it again. And I noticed a lot of the technical difficulties just because I had to maximize because I could not afford to pay for two days. I was like, we're getting everything <laughs> that we need today. This is not an option. Um, but overall, I'm still I'm very happy with, with how everything turned out, and I was grateful that they were willing to literally treat me as a student still photographer uh, to use that location, which was still expensive, but it, it, to me, it made the movie. What oh, sorry, the camera, yes, so my DP uses a, a Panasonic Vericam, which I've never had experience with before, but that's his baby, so we just used that camera, and I had never shot with that camera before, and it's kind of a unique camera, but it, it was beautiful. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Any, any more questions? One more yes, question? I have One a more question. question. Can oh, we get we our mic? One more question? On this side. Oh, oh yeah, I thought it was on <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. Um, I have a question. As, a, as an artist, sometimes you're driven by trying to get the thought out whether it's through film or on paper, and you're not really thinking about impact, you just want to get the art finished or the piece finished. So looking back, how has it impacted your life? Looking, because this is maybe fiction, but it's so real. Uh, yeah, and there's, there's definitely real elements to it. So I feel like many times there's, many of us, we might regret things that we've done in, in the past, and we have a tendency to hold on to those feelings, and it, we have a hard time moving forward with our life. Um, and also, I think that there's many things that we wish that we would have pursued that we never did. And I wanted to make a film that would hopefully inspire the audience to realize that it's never too late, whether you're 30 or 70, to maybe start doing some of the things that you wish you would have done earlier in your life. And also that it, it's important to forgive yourself for anything that you might be holding on to and move forward with your life as well. So I wanted to create a film about hope, love, and forgiveness and the power of moving on and being able to pursue your passions no matter how old you are in life. Yeah, and I wanted to do something that, while it might um, instill, you know, religion did not push it on, on, you know, or didn't force it down you, that kind of left it open to the audience's interpretation uh, as well, whether they're spirit, whether they believe in God or whether they don't, hopefully they can still get something out of it. Um, that was another goal as well. 
I wanted to ask you, and this will be the last question. You mentioned the, uh, I, I want, your adjective was crappy comedies that you, you did. Well, no, I, I enjoy them. They're just the production value. Well, I said, horrible. <laughs> was horrible. Okay. They, they funny. They okay. Just, I was, was, was going to ask they you. They don't look as nice. Okay. So what's the adjective then? Huh? The adjective is? Um, I should say that they're just not as, as polished. Polished. Unpolished as comedies. Unpolished comedies okay. in terms of did the production you submit value. Those, did you submit those to this festival? Uh, no, I did not. You did not. Okay. I did not. All right. But, but and so, so on a scale of one to ten, you would rate those a... So I, I think that they're actually very funny, but in terms of the production quality and the right. quality, I would probably mark them uh, a five. And this would be a? Uh, to me, probably an eight. Okay, strong eight. Yeah, strong eight. Okay. Strong eight. But I'm very critical, you know. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, give a hand for Mr. Nate Duncan, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck with everything. Thank you.